Hi, I'm Crystal, an art educator here at the Red Deer Museum and Art Gallery. Today, <clears throat> we are going to be doing a watercolor, sorry, uh, well, it's a cityscape and we're using oil pastel uh, resist, which is so cool because the oil pastel resists the water. Uh, I was talking with my kids about it the other day. We were talking about what happens with the oil pastel and watercolor. Anyway, so we are doing something new here. We are streaming as well to YouTube. So that is pretty cool. And so I'm going to be switching the screens and stuff and trying that out. Okay. Um, right. I'm supposed to go to another screen. Hey, we got it. Uh, I will go even further. All right. So for what, for the supplies that we want today is we want, um, ideally a heavier weight, um, gr uh, oh, gray piece of paper. It can either be, um, cardstock or, uh, this is a pastel paper. Uh, if you want some sort of a pastel paper, Alberta Art and Drafting downtown Red Deer can hook you up. Okay. So we want that heavier paper because if it's just, um, a thin paper, it won't be able to take the watercolor the same way. So you can use cardstock or you can use this um, pastel paper. So we want uh, oil pastel sticks. Um, wait, I gotta remember that it's overhead now so you guys see a different view. Okay, so we want white, uh, possibly yellow. Sometimes it doesn't work out as well. I have a palette, so I have my nice uh, lid, like my ice cream lid. Oh, this was vanilla, okay. I've got some water. Today I grabbed uh, ink, but you can also use uh, watercolor. It doesn't have to be ink. It can also just be watercolor. But I grabbed a dark blue and a black. Uh, I also grabbed a burnishing tool. I'm going to be using this fork, okay? So then I have my paper towel and my brushes. So since I'm right-handed, I'm going to set up everything on my right side. I'm going to put the paper towel just underneath my palette so then that way I can wipe with my brushes at all if need be. Okay. All right. So I think we're ready to go. The first thing that we want to do is we're going to want to fold our paper in half. All the way, we're gonna press down. And I'm using my fingernail. You can also use your burnishing tool if you want, just to get a nice crisp um, bend fold in the paper. And I'm gonna open it up, okay? So then we can see that I have this bend. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a cityscape. So I want everything to be above, or the cityscape to be above the line. So this is gonna be like, um, this is my horizon line. So this is where, the horizon line is where the land uh, meets the sky. You know, this is really weird not being able to see myself at all. However, <laughs> I will get used to it, because usually I can see a little bit of something or not, or I can sort of see out of the corner of my eye. However, let us carry on. Okay, so horizon line. Your horizon line is where the sky meets the land, okay? So this is gonna be our water below, and this is gonna be our seascape with our buildings and our trees and whatever else we might want to stick in there, okay? So I'm gonna start by drawing uh, the ground. Oh. And obviously there was orange on this stick, so there's a little bit of orange, but that's okay, not a big deal. Okay, so I am drawing, and I'm pressing not semi-hard, like I don't wanna do, okay, I'm just gonna move this for a second so you guys can see. So if I press really lightly, then you're not gonna get as dark of a white, but if I press harder, see the difference? So that's pressing harder, this is pressing light, for this particular project, we kind of want to, I guess, a mid-tone or mid-press, mid, mid sort of hard, sort of soft. We kind of want 
in between. Okay, so we're going to carry on with this pressing. So now that I've done my initial um, ground on my horizon line, I'm going to draw in some um, uh, buildings, okay? And we don't need a picture or anything because they don't have to be uh, exact. We are not going for a photorealistic landscape. Uh, everybody kind of knows what some buildings look like, right? So I'm going to draw in. Got some rectangles going on here. Um, I'll draw some more over here. Some can be skinnier, some can be wider, however you want your city to go. Just remember to press a, like, a little bit harder. It doesn't have to be super hard, just so that you can, um, you will see why we need to press harder in a moment. Okay, so. If we don't press hard enough initially, we're not gonna be able to transfer some of this to the, the, um, the water, which is what we want for this project. Okay, so I've got some uh, rectangles here, and now I'm going to draw in some windows. Geez, my words are escaping me at the moment. It's always good when that happens. Okay. I'm putting in some windows, rectangles down here. I'm going to put a door. There is a door, you know, and I'm going to add a little bush, a shrub. All right. There's my shrub. Okay. And now I'm going to put another shrub. So, or I guess it'd be a tree. That would be a really tall shrub. So it's going to be a tree. <laughs> okay. So we got a couple of trees on the go. Okay, there's that building. Then we're going to get another another door over here. You know, I'm looking at what I drew last time and I'm like, was that a shrub? Was it not a shrub? I have no idea. You guys probably don't know what I'm talking about. I am just looking at what I drew before. I usually... I sometimes like to have something to look at when I'm drawing. I'm not necessarily going to try to make it exact. It's just nice to have something to look at. Okay, so one of those flight tower things. Is that what they're called? No, towers so that you don't, planes don't fly into them. Anyway, doesn't really matter. Okay, and I'm adding some more windows. <laughs> that looks like a, a mouth and two eyes. Uh, so I'll put another window right here. Otherwise, it's kind of creepy looking. Maybe another door. And I'll put a tree this time. Okay. Like I said, yeah, I'm just um, putting windows... Now, when you get this business on, okay, we can also add a moon or something because it is a nighttime scene. Okay. And then I'm also going to then put some specks just so they're uh, stars. I want stars on this because it's nighttime. And we're going to pretend that there's not a ton of city pollution and we can actually see the stars. So we're going to put those stars in there. Okay. On both sides. Now, I also have yellow. So with my yellow oil pastel, oh, it looks like I might need to peel this down a bit. Okay. 
and I'm pressing harder as well. And actually with the yellow, you might want to press even harder than you did with the white, just so that it transfers nicely. Uh, then I'm going to do the odd window with yellow because then it'll look like uh, this with this night scene, our uh, lights are on in the, the odd the odd building because not everybody is asleep at at 8.30. A lot of times I am, or I'd like to be, I want my boys to be definitely, it's like, yep, it's been a long day, go to sleep. I'm sure all parents out there can commiserate with me. Mind you, next week, since it's uh, um, Easter break, Gunner will be here doing the, the project. Say I will be doing the project next week. Okay, so do I need to put any more lights? You know what? I think that is good. Okay, so I have some lights. I have some trees. I have some buildings. Good. Now, for the burnishing part, what we want to do is we're going to close this, uh, our fold our paper in half, and you want, oh, excuse me, goodness, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm using a fork. So you want something metal. It can be a fork, it can be a spoon, it can be um, a knife, whatever you want to use. And this might be, this will be fun for the kids to do. You just want to make sure that they press really hard because if it's not, we'll be able to tell if we haven't pressed hard enough. So what we want to do is we want to start going over this quite roughly. Oh, but not so much. Oh, I, I ripped the paper underneath, not this. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to open this just so you can see what we're trying to do. Okay. So it's really cool. We can see, I hope you guys can see that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I look over here and I can see. So I have not burnished on this side, but you can see where you're getting that little bit of white and yellow coming over. So what that means is when we start to paint, it's going to look like um, a water scene. It's a reflected water scene. Okay. So when you flip open your paper, if you have any parents or even just yourself doing this with kids and you don't see this, we need to burnish a little bit harder. So we just want to press a little bit harder. So we're going to go back in there. And I'm just rotating my paper because it's a little bit easier for me. You always want to do what's easiest for yourself. So if it's easier for you or your kids or whoever you're doing this with, rotate your art. That is perfectly okay. It's not like when we're um, composing a letter to somebody and it has to be this way in front of us and we're writing with our pencils right to left. Sorry, left to right. However, we can rotate to make it easier for ourselves. Okay, and you can also periodically check. So if you can see, and oh yeah, you can see it. So if I, um, you can see over here how there is really nice, um, you can see the building quite well. Yeah, it's all looking pretty good. I'm just going to do a little bit more on this side that I didn't initially do. And then we can get going with that painting part. All right. Okay. So I have burnished my uh, image. Okay, so I'm going to move my oil pastels over because I don't need them. So I had grabbed, um, you know, for some reason, and I didn't check before I sat down, if you get bigger bottles of ink, it comes with an eyedropper. So I need to just, this one doesn't. So, okay, parents or at home, whoever, if you have a small thing of ink, make sure that you do it carefully or get an eyedropper. So I'm going to carefully, okay, take some of that out. 
pretty sure these Bombay inks are uh, water soluble, so you're not going to stain a table. Ideally, you shouldn't stain the table. Oh, never mind. Okay, this stuff is light, fast, and waterproof. That means, yes, you will stain your clothing and your table, so make sure you put something down. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do, I, I am dipping my brush uh, in the water. I don't need a ton of water, so I do, after I dip it, I just kind of go back and forth to get off some of that water. And I'm taking this ink and I'm going to start painting over top. I might want to add a little bit of water because it's not, um, you know, usually oil pastel resists You know, I'm just thinking, I'm just like, why is my water, my oil pastel not working as well? Hmm. Something. You know, I'm totally, I'm sitting here now going, I'm trying to figure this out. Okay. Yeah, no, that's odd, because usually what happens is it resists it quite nicely. So, you know what I'm going to do? That's better. I'm going to water down this ink a bit more. I was thinking that by using the um, ink, it might have been a little bit deeper than what I had done uh, for the example. However, I think I just should have went with watercolor. Look at me trying to be all fancy using ink, and it would have just been better how to use the watercolor. Okay, so with the ink, I'm just watering it down a little bit more so that the uh, oil pastel is resisting. I wonder, maybe it has something to do with the paper I'm using. Yeah, I've never had that issue before. Okay, so if you do have that issue, let's just add some more water. We can add water to the ink, we can water it down. Okay. Yeah, with the ink watered down a little bit, yeah, it's working good now. Like I said, I just should have used the, uh, the oil past or the watercolor and not been so fancy. You know, with that being said, I would like it. Well, no, never mind. I'm just thinking out loud now. Okay, so I did the top. Everything's looking good. Yeah, see, and I'm just going to go over this with a little bit more water and um, it'll push some of that, uh, that ink off. Worst case scenario, we got our trusted paper towel. Okay, I'm dabbing some of this. You know, usually I really, I hate that term. I uh, paint with a group of ladies, I teach them every week and I bug them and I'm like, don't dab. It's okay to dab with paper towels. Just don't dab with your paintbrush, please. Okay, there. Now, we need to do the um, the bottom, the, the water now. So what I'm doing is I'm adding even more water because we want it to be lighter. If we make the um, the water just as dark, as the sky, then it's not going to look like water and sky. 
So by making it lighter, we're going to separate the bottom from the top. And for those of you at home, if you are using um, watercolor, you can go ahead and add a little bit of black. You can go over that again. You know, and I might, actually that's what I'll do because I know if I use more water, um, I'm still resisting properly. So yeah, it, I just was trying to use the straight ink when I should have diluted it some, so that was my bad. Uh, but, you know, we figured this out together, and now it's, we're good. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take some of the black that I had grabbed, uh, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna carefully, because once, I say be careful, and here I dump a ton. So kids, let your parents help if you're doing this, please. Okay, so I have decided, yeah, ah, there we go. Okay, I'm diluting, diluting this black quite a bit just that I can make my sky look a little bit deeper, darker. Because it's supposed to be a nighttime scene, not a dusk scene. The other thing I would recommend too, and this is for anybody who is working with um, watercolor and oil pastels, I don't recommend you take your brush and just really scrub because if you do you can get some oil pastel lifting up onto your brush and that can ruin your brush however if you do get a bunch of if you do get if you do start painting a little bit energetically and do get some in your brush um all of an olive oil based soap or even just some olive oil uh, Murphy's oil soap, if you have some of that at home, that will all get that out. Because if you think about it, uh, wax crayons are, or the oil, or wax crayons or oil pastels are wax based. Uh, they're an oil base. So if you use something, a type of soap that cleans that, like, like I said, the Murphy's or an oil, uh, olive oil based bar of soap, then you'll clean that right out. All right, there we go. Looking much better. Okay. And then I'm just gonna take, just gonna go over this a little bit more because really with the water and our water reflection, it would be a little bit um, deeper right here. There, we did it. Now we have a beautiful oil pastel uh, resist with our cityscape scene. Now, as this dries, you can already see as it's starting to dry, it's starting to flatten. Uh, if you, once it's completely dry, you want this perfectly flat, then you can go ahead and um, put some books on it. I tell that to my boys all the time because oftentimes they come home with all sorts of stuff crumpled up in their backpack so it's like okay let's put a book over it so here is our finished piece um do i mm, i'm not going to lift it up and show it closer to you just because we got some water drippage uh however i will show you next week's i will go up closer okay so we are doing uh, a watercolor resist uh oil pastel egg Feel like I'm saying these words over and over again. Anyway, okay, so this is on watercolor paper. So we want a, uh, a sheet of watercolor paper. This was taped down uh, to a board with some painter's tape, this beautiful green tape. Uh, and then we're gonna get some, yeah, so you want multiple oil pastel colors, uh, pencil, eraser if you want, uh, your water, your brush, everything you would use 
actually the stuff you would have used today will be perfect for next week's project and this will be with Saya on Tuesday and then pretty sure my son Gunnar will be here as well so he will be doing this with you so you can see how a um, it can be a fa very family friendly project okay so once again I am Crystal uh, art educator here at the Red Deer Museum and Art Gallery I hope you guys had a lot of fun learned some stuff and I will see you no I won't see you, but I will be here. My son Gunnar and Saya will be with you next week on Tuesday at 11 to do your Easter egg project. <laughs>